All right, guys. So today I'll just be showing you what the modification for the slave cylinder is. This can be good for the Hondo Cords 03 to 07. They have the little check valve on the inside. Um, basically, check valve slows down the fluid travel between the clutch and the actual clutch fork. So this will be any time you quick shift or do anything like that, it'll slow down the engagement. Um, and sometimes it can wear down the clutch quicker, depending on your driving style. It really depends. If you're an aggressive driver, you like um, quick shifting, doing things like that, then this should this mod should be pretty good for you. It's going to feel a lot better. It's not going to feel mushy on your pedal. Um, so basically, I don't know. I haven't seen a video of anybody do this. So these are the tools that I basically use to get at it. Um, I was I had to get something, you know, pointy pliers so I can actually get to the little snap ring that goes on here in the end. Um, so I use anything, you know, with a good point on it. Should be able to work. Pliers so you can get at it. Um, so this is a cylinder already. I already actually took it out. So that's what it looks on the inside. Get a good look there. There's the inlet for the actual valve at the top. And the actual valve itself, the one that you're actually trying to delete, slides right into here. So that looks like this. I used the original one, so that's the reason why this is... You can buy them new, if you like. They run anything between $60 to $100, depending where you buy it from. And this little valve actually goes straight into here and actually comes in this way. Just like that. And it comes right out. So, um... To get this out, usually on the newer slave cylinders, if you buy brand new, you don't need to notch in here because I use a little rotor to cut into the aluminum so I can get to the snap ring because it was already rusted in, in there and everything. This is the cap here. This is the cap that goes right onto there. So this, on a new one, you probably don't need to go through this procedure because the snap ring won't be rusted in there. Um, the snap ring actually looks like this right here. So the snap ring, while this is in place over here, the snap ring holds this piece in place, and this little gasket comes out with it too. So after getting all my materials together, basically, what I did was this is how the slave cylinder just looks on its own. So um, make sure you don't pull any of this out. This also actually stays all together pretty well after you take it off the car. So just try not playing with it too much. Um, in this piece here, you have the option because if you're using, especially if you're using an older one, this for you know for people who use their old one. What I did that what I did is um I grabbed it from this angle and the snap ring collar actually sat like this. So what you're trying to do is get to this little piece here so you can actually take, you know, one of the small tools that you have here um and try to get underneath the, the, the pin so you can push it up and squeeze it out the way you need to be careful that if you um tend to get to this pretty easy after you get the um, you know, drill the notch into here, because it's gonna be sitting actually flush with that piece that I removed over here. Um Try not to get too far down, um, you know, too much farther down the collar here because if not, you might damage the O-ring that comes in here. So it's, you know, a little tricky to get to. Um, so what I did was I notched it in here. And as soon as I got this cotter pin out, which took me, you know, norm, took me like two hours to get to this thing. Um, might be easier for other people. So the only thing that I did is use a um, small Dremel like this. So... You know, Dremel harder, definitely a metal Dremel. It's going to be harder than the lumen. I was going to cut through it easy. So I was just able to fit it in here and kind of, you know, drill it out until I came flush with the actual ring itself. When I got that out, this was hell, trying to get this thing out. Um, so what it did was, on the inside, when I turned it over, it doesn't matter if you actually damage this piece because this is the piece that you're going to be taking out. I just took a nail from a, you know, from a nail gun. It can be an Allen key as long as your Allen key is long enough. Like this Allen key was able to fit. It's really small. So actually I was able to put it into the hole here and slide it all the way through. Um, but I was able to actually do it with the nail because the nail is almost the same length as the... Actually, it's not this one. Might be somewhere else. Actually, no. It is this one. Well, you know, something long enough that's going to be able to pass through the top here and go all the way through and hit the actual base of this, which is going to be sitting this way here. What I did was I just literally put this in here and I tapped it all the way through and kept tapping and tapping it lightly with a hammer. And I saw that it wasn't moving. So I kept, you know, t smacking it just harder and harder until eventually it started sliding out little by little. And eventually it came off far enough that I was actually able to grab it with the pliers and just, you know, kind of twist it and wiggle it out. And make sure you use penetrating oil so you actually don't damage the gasket. Now you might need to buy a new one. 
Um, so I got that all the way out and that's the finished product. And it looked like a swamp in there, so I had to clean it out, give it a little bit of brake cleaner, um, and then clean it out real nice. And that's it. And the only thing you need to do is just after that, just take it, slide this piece out. You're gonna have a, you know, fully functioning slave zone after that. And then that's it. The last thing you need to do is just slide this back in here. And when that's slid all the way in, then you just take the, the locking ring, lock it back in there, and that's it. That's all really has to be done. And then it goes right back into your car.